Yes, ma'am. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 2, verse 11, and then verses 17 through 19. And it reads, the whole commandment that I command you today, you should be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you should remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. Verse 11, take care lest you forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. Verse 17, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. In verse 19, and if you forget the Lord your God and you go after other gods and serve them and worship them, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are not too many biblical narratives that explicit imagery or as hopeful or as optimistic and as encouraging as the imagery of, of our text that our text gives us this morning. Here with eyes fixed upon the horizon of rising sun with hearts set on the well-anticipated reception of promised proclamations with yearnings and hopes filled with the expectancy of fulfillment. These people who have traveled some their entire lives, some with only the memories of their fathers and mothers, which they carried with them around Jericho's walls and through Jordan's river, and still others who have only heard about through stories passed down what they are about to step foot into. They have reached the promised land. They have reached their mountain top. They have eyes fixed upon the glory of God's truth in action. They have arrived. And, and just before they step foot into, just before they lay claim upon, just before they take possession of this promise, God gets their attention and reminds them to remember. See, there is, there has, and there always will be power in remembering. What exactly are they encouraged to remember here? Well, remember the storms that they have just walked through. Remember the storms of enslavement. Remember the storms of a wilderness. Remember the storms of being hopeless and joyless and peaceless. Remember the storm of being frightened and lost and hungry and thirsty and everything else they have just been through. Storms, remember the storms so devastating that many of them even contemplated how good they used to have it back when they were slaves in Egypt. God calls them at this moment to not only remember the storms, but more importantly, remember the one that got them through each and every one of those storms. Remember the one that got them through slavery in Egypt. Remember the one that got them through the Red Sea when their enemies almost got them. Remember the one that got them through hunger and thirst in the wilderness. See, before they step foot into the promise that God plans for them, before they take a sip of all that milk and honey that God has provided for them, God says, Remember the storm that you have just been through. Why? Well, first of all, so that they can remember who got them through the storms. 
And secondly, so that they can be motivated and be clear on the means and the methods in which to get them through another storm when they arise. Even as they stand in anticipation of acquiring and living in a promised land. See, there is something to be said here about storms in promised lands. Because even as God ushers them into promise, God does not promise them a stormless existence. Even as God is ready to guide their final steps into this much anticipated land of promise, God does not promise them a troubleless reality. Even as God is ready to give them what they have been hoping for and praying for for generations, God, God does not promise them an existence of never having to experience what they have just been through again. And, and, and we don't have to look any further than our own journey as a people who have benefited and are existing in the quiet promises of our ancestors. We, we don't have to look any further than our history to understand that promises does not mean stormless. We don't have to look any further than our own history as a people to understand that promise does not mean problemless. Promise does not mean worryless. Promise does not mean troubleless. Promise does not mean easy. Promise does not mean people will never ever look at you as less than, worthless, or irrelevant again. Promise does not mean that power structures and systems will not do all they can to remind you that you aren't as important as others because of your gender or your race or who and how you love. Promises does not mean that judges on high benches and lawmakers on high horses would never try to systematically restrain you and return you back to a time where your voice and your ideas and your worth does not matter. Promise does not mean stormless. And as we are reminded when we began this conversation about standing, those of us who desire and are striving to be like Christ will endure storms in our lives. Even while reaping the blessing of God's promises. As long as we are trying to live righteous, as long as we're trying to faithfully follow after God, we will encounter storms even while walking on promised ground. And because storms are in inevitable and because storms are often relentless, storms will lead us asking as the song implies, what do I do when there's nothing left for me to do? What do I give when I've already given everything? What do I do when I have nothing left to do in this storm? And as we've already learned, we stand. And last time we explored the essence stand, being sincere in our faith and trust in God. And this week for, for a little more, for a little while, I want to explore the T and stand, being tenacious in remembrance. What do you do in a storm when you have nothing left to do? You be tenacious in remembering You be firm. You be consistent. You be insistent. You be determined in remembering. In verse 11, God reminds them, beware to never forget the Lord your God. As the people of Israel are reflecting on the previous storms that they have just experienced. And as they consider the storms that will arise in their promised land, God gives them the command to never forget or to always remember the Lord. It is a most imperative practice while experiencing storms to never forget the Lord your God. This phrase, beware, never forget, translates into the Hebrew words, shamer. And it's a simple command to keep continual watch. It is a command for continual dependence 
and obedience. It means to continually turn one's mind toward God and to pay a close attention that one does not let God and God's goodness slip from one's thoughts, even while in a storm. Beware, never forget the Lord. See, see, God understands for us, just as God understands for the people of Israel in our text, that storms are persistent and effective and efficient in one thing, causing our minds to wander. Storms have a way of causing us, even those of us who profess the faith and preach the word and proclaim the name of Christ, to forget storms like systematic racism and inequality and injustice can have the effect of amnesia, even for the most faithful of folk. Storms like losing a loved one, willing to, witnessing the ill health of a friend or experiencing moments and seasons of uncertainties in our personal lives can often cause us to turn our attention and focus on something or someone other than our God, regardless of how holy we claim to be. And God says in those moments, in those very circumstances, in those very seasons of un un unremitting storms, to never forget, even when clouds are dark and low, even when pain seems unbearable, even when friends send you straight to voicemail, even when laws are passed to perpetrate, to, 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 to continue marginalization and oppression, even when it's so easy to simply forget. God says don't, because if you don't forget me, you will never forget my goodness. You see, as bad as they are, storms gives us an opportunity for reflection. Just as the people of Israel are paused in reflection in our text, storms gives us an opportunity to remember and to refocus on the goodness of God. See, while I am yet experiencing storms in my life, and while there's often nothing I can do about the storms, I can always remember, like we spoke before, I have a God that speaks to storms. While I can do nothing on my own, I have a God that rebukes storms. While I can do nothing on my own, I have a God that tells storms to be still. While all of my skills and all of my talents and all of my gifts are unable to shield me from the hurt, harm, and danger, I can be like the Israelites in our text and remember what God has already done for me. I can remember the storms that God has already seen me through. I can recall the miraculous deeds God has already performed. I can recall God's mighty acts on my behalf that God has already displayed. And if I can remember that, if I can beware to never forget that, then I can understand that when I couldn't see my own way out, when I couldn't find which way to turn, when I couldn't use intellect or my money or my charisma to get me through, God did what God does and God has always done what God said God would always do. Beware to never forget. God rescues us in times of danger. Beware to never forget God covers us in times of uncertainties. Beware to never forget God clears paths for us like parting of red seas when our enemies are almost at our feet. Beware we never forget when, when men make laws and policies and regulations to demean, belittle, oppress, and marginalize communities. We remember that we have a history of surviving those storms because of what God is and what God does. And I can just hear our ancestors proclaim to us from the heavens, beware, you never forget the Lord. Beware, you never forget the goodness of God. Beware, you never forget the ways out of no ways of past storms. Beware, you never forget the refuge and present dangers of past storms. Beware, you never forget the help 
and present troubles of past storms. Beware, you never forget the Lord, your God. That's been tenacious in remembering no matter what we go through, we can always remember. Verses 18 and 19 of this text gives us both motivation to remember and a warning for forgetting. And they read, you should remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Verse 19, and if you forget the Lord your God, I solemnly warn you today that you shall surely perish. Wealth in this context is translated to the Hebrew word fayel, and it means strength. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get strength. It indicates virtue and valor, integrity and courage. It means might and power and ability. And it, it, implies, it implies the ability, capacity, and proficiency to not only withstand something, but to prosper through it. If you remember me, God says, in your storms, not only would I give you what you need to stand during the storms, but by the time you get through it, you will be stronger. By the time you get through it, you will be greater. By the time you get through it, you will have stronger joy. By the time you get through it, you will have stronger peace. By the time you get through it, you will have stronger happiness. By the time you get through it, you will have stronger patience. By the time you get through it, you will have stronger faith. Ah, but if you don't remember while you go through your storms, if you forget what I've always done for you, if you choose to focus on anyone or anything else for relief or for help or for security while you go through your storms, if you forget your Lord, you shall surely perish. Going back to the Hebrew translation, this word perish is avar, and it means to fail. It means to lose oneself, to utterly be undone and to fail. It, 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 it implies to have no way to flee and to be ultimately destroyed. This is what happens when we try to do all we can when facing storms and forget the Lord our God. This is what happens when we give all that we have to give during storms. This is what happens when we try to get ourselves out of the waves and the winds. This is what happens when we create and build our own shelters to shield us from the breeze of storms. This is what happens when we think we are powerful enough or smart enough or intelligent enough or wealthy enough or good looking enough or holy enough or Christian enough to get ourselves out of storms. This is what happens when we forget to taste and see that the Lord is good and God's mercies endure us forever even while it's in storm. This is what happens when we forget that blessed is the one that takes refuge in the Lord. This is what happens when we forget. Next week, we explore how we are called to remember God because just as important as being tenacious in remembering God, it is equally important that we realize that God gives us specifics and how we are to remember. But before I close, I, I must talk about aha moments. A, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Atlanta at a training. It, it, this was probably the best professional training I've ever been to in my life. Uh, I went expecting a couple hours a day and hanging out at the pool at the hotel, but it turned out to be 12 hour days. 
and, and, and I was assigned a small home group where we were able to discuss and debrief the intense learning that happened in each day. After 12 hours of, of, of learning, we, we, we would meet every night and just kind of debrief. And this is where most of the learning was. And, and in this small home group, I was in with some of the greatest minds in our country. And I, and, and I learned about aha moments. These are moments of sudden revelations and realization that leads to positive outcomes. These are moments that, that, that have not only helped us remember, but help us reflect. And I believe that this is what God is trying to give the people of Israel as they stand at the foot of the promised land, an aha moment. I also believe that God gives all of us aha moments. I mean, whoever had an aha moment for a while, and maybe I had one in the car that I was just driving, just thinking, and something just came about how good God is. These are moments where God reveals God's self to us as a gift of remembrance so that we can reflect on how good God is. Moments sometimes unexpected, but, but, but always much needed. Moments when hell is loud and strength may be fading, God reveals God's self and God's goodness and aha moments to remind us that no weapons formed against us shall ever prosper. Moments when our names are being dragged through the mud because of jealousy and hate, God reveals God's self and God's goodness and gives us an aha moment to remind us that blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall exclude you and shall insult you and shall cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Moments when it seems as if you are all alone and people around you are quick to remind you that you don't fit in and you don't belong here. God reveals God's self and God's goodness in aha moments to remind us that God never leaves us nor forsake us. And I believe aha moments can come at any time to remind us that God is still good. Like I said, we could be driving to work, which often happens to me and all of a sudden, aha. We can be we can be we can be eating dinner with our families and all of a sudden, aha. We can wake up in the morning with an aha moment. We can have aha moments in the shower. We can have aha moments at work. We can have aha moments while laying in the bed. We can have aha moments right before we step foot in promise. So that we beware, we never forget the Lord our God and how good God is. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.